Hey, junior hires, um, so glad to join you this morning. I'm excited what God's doing in your life. I'm excited to start seeing you in person soon. We will see when that happens. Um, but hey, let's go ahead and open a word of prayer. Dear God, I just thank you so much for these students. Lord, would you continue to work in their lives, even in the midst of um, life being a little crazy, a little different, Lord. Would you teach them something new, and would you gear them up and get them ready so they can be a light for you on their campuses, Lord. We love you so much in your name. Amen. Hey, just a few years ago, um, my family went on a huge cruise. We did a Caribbean cruise. It was literally um, one of the most expensive vacations I've ever had to save for, um, but it was my whole family was going, meaning my parents and my dad were like, we got to do it. And we were so excited, and they were trying to sell me on, Trav, look at all the amazing uh, things that are on this ship, and it's all free. It's all going like, no way. And, like, they had this hot dog place where you could go to any time and get any kind of different hot dogs. They had an ice cream parlor, and I was like, this is legit. And I am selling my kids. Let me tell you, they had all these um, activities on the boat that I'm like, this is going to be amazing. And then we get on the boat. And the first day I'm like, guys, let's go to the boardwalk and let's get some free hot dogs. And I remember we walk in and the hot dogs weren't free. You're like, what? Um, we go to the ice cream parlor. Ice cream's not free. We go to the rock climbing. That's not free. And all of a sudden I find out everything you have to pay for. And I was so mad. I was like, okay, if you would have told me we had to pay for this. It was crazy. It was such a letdown. I wish somebody would have told me that all those things that I was so excited and selling my kids on, I was going to have to pay for. Um, we're continuing our series, What They Never Told Me When I Became a Christian. And just like I said, I wish they would have told me these things before I got on the cruise. There are things when we um, become Christians and give our lives to the Christ and where the Holy Spirit comes into our life, um, there are going to be things in your life where you're like, wait a minute, I don't think I signed up for this. Or I thought it was going to be way different because that's what happened in my life. And we've been going through a series. We talked about, um, you know, I talked about that no one ever told me I'd still doubt God sometimes as a Christian. No one ever told me, um, Shara talked a couple weeks ago, that no one ever told me that, hey, I would still experience suffering and pain. And even Taylor last week talked about, um, no one ever told me that the Bible would still be hard um, to understand and, and to get. And, and today, I want to talk about another one that can be hard to understand or, or what we, we can struggle with is no one ever told me I became a Christian that I would still experience guilt, that I would still have guilt, that guilty feelings wouldn't always go away. You know, there's some things in life that even though they seem like they're fixed, they don't always go away. Certain broken bones. Remember, I broke my wrist and it took months to heal, but still, it's a little weak in certain areas. I'm still a little nervous about that. I have scars that, hey, they healed up, but they're never fully going to go away. Um, car damage. Some things that, like, you can't see the damage. My father-in-law got, got um, in a huge car accident. They fixed it all, and they found out later that the frame was cracked a little bit. It's like they didn't even see that. Like, there are things that happen that sometimes, even when they look like they're fixed, they don't always go away. And, and here's the thing is, the same with guilt. Sometimes, after you've correct the problem... Guilty feelings don't always go away. You know, I don't know if any of you ever really felt guilty. Um, you know, I remember when I was a kid, um, you know, felt guilty because I was mean to someone and I hurt their feelings and then felt guilty afterwards. Um, I remember cheating on a test and just felt guilty like, God, I'm so sorry. I, I remember even times in my life of just um, different things that I did that I felt guilty about. And here's the thing is, guilt is actually a good thing. You know, guilt is kind of like a pain system. You know, like when you scrape your knee, um, when you get hurt, it kind of tells your body or tells you, hey, something bad happened. I mean, that's kind of guilt. You know, I remember when I was a kid, I was running around the, the house and, you know, I went a, around a corner outside and all of a sudden I had this pain on my leg and I didn't realize there was a nail sticking out that just just ripped up my leg. I mean, it was huge. And I would have, honestly, that, that pain I would have never even noticed if I didn't have that pain system. And guilt is kind of the same way. It's a way of telling you, hey, what you did, that was wrong. And you start to get these guilt feelings. And it's actually a really good thing. Guilt is a good thing. Um, 
But here's the problem is guilt was designed to let you know, hey, you need to correct this. And sometimes we correct the problem and still guilt sticks around. And I want you to let you know something that it's normal. Even some of the best Christians in the world have struggled with guilt after they've sinned um, days, weeks, months, and even years later. And what happens is those guilty feelings can kind of get in the way of your walk with God. It can start to affect your walk with God, and it can even sometimes hurt your relationship with God. And then some people have ended up walking away from God because they didn't deal with these guilty feelings. And so I want to continue this series just talking about no one ever tells me that even after I've dealt with guilt, it doesn't always go away. I want to talk about that and talk about what to do. So here's the thing to let you know is the first thing is if you have guilty feelings, you first thing you need to do is you need to find it. You need to find out what is causing the guilt. Because let me just be honest with you. There is guilt. We have this incredible system designed to help us know what is in the wrong. But you know, even our, even our system, our, our minds can sometimes trick us. Um, you might be feeling guilty and you need to find it. What have you done? Was there something you did that is causing the guilt? Because sometimes it's, um, we can get tricked by, hey, I ate too much carne asada last night and I'm not feeling good. And it, who knows? There's different things. And so the first step is just finding where is this guilt coming from? Hey, ask some questions. Are there people I've wronged? Is there things I've done that, that God wouldn't be happy about? Um, are there things I've said to my parents? things I've looked at, that would be the start. But you need to find the source of where the guilt is. So that's the first thing. If you want to help um, figure this out, is find out where it is. The second thing, though, is when you're struggling with guilt and it's not going away, is first thing is find it. But second thing is ask God to forgive it. The second thing you do is you need to ask God to forgive it. It says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, it's amazing. He says, if we confess our sins to him, he says he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Acts 2.38 says, um, Peter's talking. He says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It talks all the time that we need to go to God, we need to confess our sins, and we need to ask for forgiveness. And here's the cool part about God. You see in the Bible all the time that he says, hey, and I will forgive you, and it'll be gone. Almost like he forgets about it. Now listen, God does not forget. Like he, if, if he forgot and is like, wait, you... That's impossible, but it's like that. It's like, listen, you are washed clean. He doesn't see, He doesn't use it against you. It's gone. It's It's been taken care of. And if you haven't asked for forgiveness, well, that might be why you have guilt. But, but here's the problem is, sometimes we feel guilty and we've asked for forgiveness and it doesn't go away. And you're like, but wait a minute. And, and here's what I want you to know something. God does talk about that he'll forgive it. It's done. But I want to I wanna let you know something doesn't mean there aren't consequences. <laughs> there are consequences for our sin, and it might be now or it might be later. Um, but even after you've asked for forgiveness, after God's forgiven you, said, hey, I remember it no more. Here's the thing is, sometimes we still feel guilty. And the third thing after you've found it, where what it is, what's causing the guilt, after you've asked God for forgiveness, the third thing is you might have to correct it. You know, what's funny is some of us think that when we sin, oh, well, I went to God, ask for forgiveness. And I want you to know that's, that's the first most important thing. But God talks about all the time that we need to also ask others for forgiveness. I mean, you can read the Bible. It's funny. Jesus is like, make sure you forgive others. <laughs> um, make sure you're forgiving, implying that people are supposed to come and ask for forgiveness. And, and it talks about in the Bible, it says in, in Acts 3.19, Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out 
that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. That's in Acts 3.19. It talks about this. Hey, we need to repent. We need to go. And then it says, turn to God. Turn away from things. I love 2 Chronicles 7.14. If people who call me by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear them from heaven and I will forgive them their sins and, and, and will heal their land. We need to turn. We need to actually correct the problem. This means that you might have to stop doing bad things. I don't know what's going on. See, some of you are feeling guilty and it's like you ask God for forgiveness and you're like, but God, you promised up there. You said you'd forgive me, but you're like, why aren't my guilty feelings going away? And it might be that you haven't stopped doing what is causing the guilt. I don't know what you're looking at at home. I have no clue. I know a lot of people struggle with what they're looking at. I don't know what you're saying to people and how you're treating people. I don't know what's going on or whether you're struggling with, with lying, whether you're struggling with stealing, whether you're tr struggling with um, pride, whether you're struggling with just being mean to others, whether you're struggling with um, pornography or what you're looking at on the computer. I don't know. but. If you want those guilty feelings to go away, you need to stop doing it. Um, I, I remember um, there was this time where I had just, I was practicing this. Hey, I need to stop. I need to start correcting. And, I, and I've worked really hard at like, guys, listen, I make a lot of mistakes. I do stupid things. But I've learned how important it is to not only ask God for forgiveness, but, but to stop it and even go ask others for forgiveness. And I remember I had, I had said something really mean to someone in our, in our college group, and I, was, and I was driving home, and I felt like, I felt so guilty. Like, God, why did I say that? In fact, I want you to know, there's times, I, a lot of times I feel that way. I'm like, God. And something that's just been neat is I'm like, I need to go take care of it right now. I need to go. So I remember I just turned around the car, went to their house, knocked on the door like, Travis, what are, you, what are you doing here? We just hung out like 45 minutes ago. And I'm like, listen, you understand. I, I, I couldn't go home. I'm sorry that I said that to you. <laughs> you know what's funny is the one that I said and went back to this one time, the person was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. And I'm like, what? Like, but here's the thing is I felt guilty about that. I asked forgiveness from God and I felt like I had to go correct the problem. Go ask forgiveness from them. And it's crazy how even though they didn't think I'd wronged them, the guilty feelings went away. Here's the thing is no one ever told me that I'd feel guilty even after like I took care of it. I mean, and there are people who their guilt has stuck around for years and years and years. You know, um, just because there's things we're going to do. And I want you to know that's normal. It's going to happen. I mean, there's steps to take. The first thing is, hey, find what's causing it. Second is ask God to forgive it. Correct the problem, whether you have to go ask someone to forgive you for it or whether you need to stop doing it. But here's the thing is, once you've done those three things, the fourth thing you need to do is you just need to forget about it. You need to forget about it and go, God, we've dealt with this. I've dealt with this. And you just need to forget about it. Because I want you to know something I said earlier that these guilty feelings can have a huge impact. They can. You don't understand. I had a friend in high school. It was my best friend. I mean, we had, we, he was on the leadership team with me at North Coast Church. We were on the, the worship team at North Coast Church. We were incredible friends. And I still remember he fell in this trap to where he fell into one sin, fell into another sin, fell into another sin. He started walking away from God. And I remember it came to me and I was like, hey, are you ever going to come back to God? And he's like, listen, I can't. Do you know what I've done? And he started listing all the things. And I said, all you got to do is ask for forgiveness. You just got to stop. And he's like, no, I don't think God will ever forgive me. And I remember it was the guilt, the guilt that he held on to led him to where he walked away. It's one of the saddest moments in my life. Guilt can have an impact that destroys and we need to be careful. No one ever told me when I became a Christian that I'd still feel guilty. There's going to be times where you still feel guilty. But listen, it's simple. Maybe not as simple as I say. You need to find what's causing it. Ask God to forgive it. Correct it. Which might mean asking others for forgiveness or stop doing stuff. And then once you've done that, forget about it. Listen, if you're strong with guilt, you're not, you're not weird. You're normal. Christians are going to struggle with it. But those are things we need to start doing because God is clear 
we need to repent and ask for forgiveness and that he will forgive you. Listen, we have a God who loves you so much and he doesn't want you to live holding on to this guilt. Let me go ahead and pray. Dear God, I just thank you so much for these students, Lord. Lord, I don't know if there are students today that are dealing with this guilt, but Lord, would you help them? Would you um, would you work in their lives, Lord? Would you help them find it? Would they be able to go to you with it? Lord, I bet you there are students, they've never gone, they never thought to go to you, Lord. Would they start going to you with it? And then, Lord, would they solve it? Would they correct it by by whether they're going to others, Lord, or whether they're, they're um, stopping things, Lord? And then, Lord, would you give them the peace to just forget about it? Lord, thank you for these students. I'm excited to see what you're going to do um, this summer in the midst of just this crazy time. We love you in your name. Amen. Hey, listen, students, thank you so much for hanging out with us this morning. I um, want to remind you, um, don't forget, join us Tuesday nights, every Tuesday night, 7 p.m. on our YouTube live, J78, and then also our Zoom mid-groups at 7.30 p.m. So excited you joined us. We'll talk to you later. Thanks.